ipinahayag ni Jesus ang sa iyang pagtamot sa sa iyang mga disipulos sa word sa katapusan. Siya ang maestro ng tao sa kuya ni Portugilad ay mag-aaral sa pagtuon ng celebration. Napangunahan ang sa tuyang kura para ko celebrate ng Padre Juin E. Bilan ay bahan sa iyang katabang na Padre celebrate ng Padre Emmanuel Joshua Babasa a Pablo.
sa pagpapinagam at si magalang na pagpapinagam pero kanong maraway ang utos na mga iyang makatamahay pagpapasalamat sa imo ng petisyon binaak at si pinako sa iyo mga disipulos na yung sabi pag-ako kamo gabo sa si magkakan kayo kaya sa po yung hawak na yung inutulot para sa ito. Sa lima ang pagkakamangin, pag-ako niya kayo ni mahalagang talis sa mga banala si mahal ng kanyang kamot, pagpasalamat ni Haray sa imo na bendisyon Pinakuha sa inyong mga disipulos na nagsabi, Mag-ako ka magbabos sa siyong mag-iong kayo, dahil ikalis ka sa kuyang tubo at bako si damay ng iba, na papagulusan para sa ito at siyong para sa ito. Pagkatawad kayo ng mga kasapan, ay ipag-ibukod ito sa pag-ibukod sa ito.
Guys, brothers and sisters, today is Good Friday and we have some clarification about the holy icons and images inside the Catholic Church and about the questions of some or most anti-Catholics Do Catholics worship statues? Catholics worship statues People still make this ridiculous claim because Catholics have statues in their churches with the accusation they are violating God's commandment you shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth or you shall not bow down to them or serve them Exodus 24 5 these people have sent a good sin they have made for themselves gods of gold Exodus 32 31 it is right to warn people against the sin of idolatry when they are committing it, but calling Catholics idolaters because they have images of Christ and the sins is based on misunderstanding or ignorance of what the Bible says about the purpose and uses, both good and bad of statues. Anti-Catholic writer Lorraine Whitner, in his book Roman Catholicism, makes the blank statement. God has forbidden the use of images in worship, 281. Yet, if people were to search the scriptures, John 5, 39, they would find the opposite is true. God forbid the worship of statues, but he did not forbid a religious use of statues. Instead, he actually commanded their use in religious contexts. God said to make them. People who oppose religious st uh, statuary, forget about the many passages where the Lord commands the making of statues. For example, And you shall make two cherubim of gold, two gold statues of angels of hammered work, shall you make them on the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub on the end and one cherub on the other end. Of one piece of the mercy seat shall 
you make the cherubim or cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. Their faces one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim. Exodus 25, 18-20 David gave Solomon the plan for the altar of incense made of refined gold and its weight. Also his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All this he made clear by the writing of the hand of the Lord concerning it all. All the work to be done according to the plan 1 Chronicles 28, 8 and 9, 10. David's plan for the temple, which the biblical author tells us, was, by the writing of the hand of the Lord concerning it all, included statues of angels. Similarly, Ezekiel 41, 17-18 describes graven carved images in the idealized temple. He was shown in a vision, for he writes, on the walls around, about in the inner room, and on the nave were carved likenesses of cherubim. The religious uses of images. During a plague of serpents sent to punish the Israelites during the Exodus, God told Moses to make a statue of a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is beaten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit any man, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Numbers 21, 8-9 one had to look at the bronze statue of the serpent to be healed, which used the statues could be used ritually, not merely as religious decorations. Catholics use statues, paintings, and other artistic devices to recall the person or thing depicted, just as it helps to remember one's mother by looking at her photograph. So it helps to recall the example of the saints by looking at pictures, of them. Catholics also use statues as teaching tools in the early church. They were especially useful for the instruction of the illiterate. Many Protestants have pictures of Jesus and other Bible pictures in Sunday school for teaching children. Catholics also use statues to commemorate certain people and events. Much as Protestant churches have three-dimensional nativity scenes at Christmas. If one measured Protestants by the same role, then by using this graven idolatry of which they accuse Catholics. But there's no idolatry going on in these situations. God forbids the worship of images as gods, but he doesn't ban the making of images. If he had if he had religious movies, videos, photographs, paintings, and all similar things would be banned. But as the case of the brain serpent, of the bronze serpent, used, God does not even forbid the ritual use of religious images. It is when people begin to adore a statue of a God that the Lord becomes angry. Those when people did start to worship the bronze serpent as a snake God, whom they named Nihustan. The righteous king Hezekiah had it is destroyed. 2 Kings 18:4. How about bowing? Sometimes anti-Catholic cite Deuteronomy 5:9, where God said concerning idols, "You shall not bow down to them," since many Catholics sometimes bow or kneel in front of statues of Jesus, and the saints anti-Catholics confuse the legitimate veneration of a sacred image with the sin of idolatry. Though bowing can be used as posture in worship, not all bowing is worship. In Japan, people show respect by bowing and greeting, the equivalent of the Western handshake. Similarly, a person who kneels before a king without worshipping him as a god. In the same way, a Catholic who may kneel in front of a statue or even praying to it, any more than the Protestant who kneels with a Bible in his hands when praying is worshipping the Bible or praying to it, hiding the second commandment. Another charge sometimes made by Protestants is that the Catholic Church hides the second commandment. 
This is because in Catholic Catechism, the first commandment is often listed as You shall have no other gods before me, Exodus 23. And the second is listed as You shall not take the name of Lord in vain, Exodus 27. From this, it is argued that Catholics have deleted the prohibition of idolatry to justify their use of religious statues. But this is a false Catholics simply group the commandments differently from most protestants in exodus 20 to 17 which gives the ten commandments there are actually 14 imperative statements to arrive at ten commandments some statements have to be grouped together and there is more than one way of doing this since in the ancient world polytheism and idolatry were always united idolatry being the outward expression of polytheism the historic Jewish numbering of the Ten Commandments has always grouped together the imperatives. You shall have no other gods for me, Exodus 23, and you shall not make for yourself a graven image. Exodus 24. The historic Catholic numbering follows the Jewish numbering on this point, as does the historic Lutheran numbering Martin Luther recognized that the imperatives against polytheism and idolatry are two parts of a single command. Jews and Christians abbreviate the commandment so that they can be remembered using a summary 10-point formula. For example, Jews, Catholics, and Protestants typically summarize the Sabbath commandment as remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Though the commandment actual takes, takes four verses, Exodus 20, 8, 11. In the prohibition of polytheism, idolatry is summarized, Jews, Catholics, and Lutherans abbreviate it. As you shall have no other gods before me. This is no attempt to hide the idolatry prohibition. Jews and Lutherans don't even use statues of saints and angels. It is to make learning the Ten Commandments easier. The Catholic Church is not dogmatic about how the Ten Commandments are to be numbered. However, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says the division and numbering of the commandments have varied in the course of history. The present Catechism follows the division of the commandments established by Augustine, which has become traditional in the Catholic Church. It is also that of the Lutheran Confession. The Greek Fathers worked out a slightly different division, which is found in the Orthodox Churches and Reformed Communities. CCC, 2066 The form of God Some anti-Catholics appear to Deuteronomy 4.5.8 and their attack on religious status. Since you saw no form of the day that the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire, beware, lest you act corruptly by making a graven image for yourselves in the form of any figure. The likeness of male or female the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth. We've already shown that God doesn't prohibit the making of statues or images of various creatures for religious purposes. 1 Kings 6, 29, 32, 8, 6, 66, 2, Chronicles 3, 7, 14, but what about statues of image that represent God? Many Protestants would say that that's wrong because Deuteronomy 4 says the Israelites did not see God under any form when he made a covenant with them. Therefore, we should not make symbolic representations of God either. But does Deuteronomy 4 forbid such representations? The answer is no. Early in its history, Israel was forbidden to make any depictions of God because he had not revealed himself in a visible form. Given the pagan culture surrounding them, the Israelites might have been tempted to worship God in the form of any or of an animal or some natural object like a ball or the sun. But later, God did reveal himself under visible forms such as in Daniel 7.9. As I looked thrown were placed and one that was ancient of days took his seat. His raiment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. 
Protestants make depiction of the Father under this form when they do illustrations of Old Testament prophecies. The Holy Spirit revealed Himself under at least two visible forms, that of a dad at the baptism of Jesus, Matthew 3.16, Mark 1.10, Luke 3.22, John 1.32, and as tanks of fires, and tanks of fire on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.14. Protestants used these images when drawing or painting these biblical episodes, and when they were Holy Spirit, lip lapel, pins or place dab in blames on their cars. But more important in the incarnation of Christ his Son, God showed mankind an icon of himself, Paul said, He is the image, great icon, of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, Christ is the tangible, divine icon of the unseen, infinite God. We read that when the Magi were going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and milk. Matthew 2.11 Though God did not reveal a form for himself on Mount Horeb, he did reveal one in the house in Bethlehem. The bottom line is, when God made the new covenant with us, He did reveal Himself under a visible form in Jesus Christ. For that reason, we can make representations of God in Christ. Even Protestants use all sorts of religious images, pictures of Jesus and other biblical persons, appear on a myriad of Bibles, picture, books, t-shirts, jewelry, bumper, stickers, greeting cards, compact discs, and major scenes. Christ is even symbolically represented through the ethnos or feast emblem. Common sense tells us that since God has revealed himself in various images, most especially in the incarnate Jesus Christ, it is not wrong for us to use images of these forms to deepen our knowledge and love of God. That's why God revealed himself in these visible forms, and that's why statues and pictures are, ma are made of them. Idolatry condemned by the church. Since the days of the apostles, the Catholic Church has consistently condemned the sin of idolatry. The early church fathers won against this sin, and church councils also dealt with the issue. The Second Council of Nicaea or Nicaea, 757, which dealt largely with the question of the religious use of images and icons, said, The one who redeemed us from the darkness of idolatry, insanity, Christ our God when he took for his bride his holy Catholic Church, promised he would guard her and assure his holy disciples, saying, I am with you every day until the consummation of this age. To this gracious offer, some people paid no attention. Being hoodwinked by the treacherous poor, they abandoned the true line of reasoning, and they failed to distinguish the holy from the prophet, asserting that the icons of our Lord and of His saints were no different from the wooden images of satanic idols. The Catechism of the Council of Trent, 1566, taught that idolatry is committed by worshipping idols and images as God, or believing that they possess any divinity or virtue, entitling them to our worship by praying for or reposing confidence in them. Idolatry is a perversion of man's innate religious sense, an idolater is someone who transfers his indestructible notion of God to anything other than God. CCC 2114 The Church absolutely recognizes and condemns the sin of idolatry. What anti-Catholics fail to recognize is the distinction between thinking a piece of stone or plaster is God and deciding to visually remember Christ and the saints in heaven by making statues in their honor. The making and use of religious statues is a thoroughly biblical practice. Anyone who says otherwise doesn't know his Bible. Nihil Obstat, I have concluded that the materials presented in this work are free of doctrinal or moral errors. Bernard Dien, Carr, Stl, Sincer, Librorum, August 10, 2004. Imprimatur in accord with, with 1983 CIC 8 Permission to publish this work is hereby granted. Robert Brown, Bishop of San Diego, August 10, 2004. Now, this is another question. 
is the procession with sacred images biblical anti-catholic protesters are very critical when it comes to procession images that the catholic church is doing during fest celebration they hit they have not done something good but attacking catholics on something they had thought to be unbiblical is it really not in the bible the bible or not bib not biblical no in fact the bible showed several instances regarding the possession of images one of them was joshua together with his army carrying the ark of the covenant with a statue of cherubims on top of it in joshua 6 6 9 it says so non san joshua called for the priests pick up the ark of the covenant he told them and have seven priests carrying seven trumpets made from rams horns in front of the ark of the lord he told the army go out and encircle the city have the armed men march out in the front of the ark of the lord and so just as joshua had commanded seven of the priests went forward carrying the seven trumpets made of rams horns in the lord's presence blowing the trumpets while the ark of the covenant of the lord followed them armed men preceded the priests who were blowing the trumpets and a rear guard followed the ark while the trumpets continued to blow another event that a procession of images was made is mentioned in 2 samuel 6 12 15 when david together with his assembly brought the ark of covenant with statues of cherubims and it says so David went out joyfully and brought up the ark of God to the city of David from Obed Edom's home. After those who were carrying the ark of the covenant had taken six steps, he sacrificed oxen and fattened animals, dancing in front of the Lord with all of his strength and wearing a linen ephod. So David and the entire assembly of Israel brought up the ark of the covenant with shouting and trumpet blasts. The Bible is clearly showing that a procession with sacred images is not prohibited because Joshua and David had been doing it many years ago, carrying the Ark. The Ark of Covenant was a box that contained the stone tablets, a manna, and the rod of Aaron. But on top of this box was a golden statue of cherubims, which is the symbol of God's presence. When those people in the Bible who paraded the Ark with an image of cherubim above, was only showing to the public that they have the Lord God was with them. The image of cherubim was just symbols of God's presence when the Israelites prayed to God. Likewise, when Catholics is parading an image of Santo Nino or Nazareno, as only displaying to the public that the Lord Jesus Christ, who was born 2,000 years ago, is our Savior and God, and the, and the image itself is not the God but only a representation of Christ here on earth because Christ is the image of the invisible God according to Colossians 1, 15.